My digital story takes place in Yangon, Myanmar, a troubled city with a bright future. Directed and narrated by Chloe Vorset. Myanmar lies in Southeast Asia, bordering a few of the world's most densely populated areas such as China. Yangon, formerly known as Rangoon under the Burmese government, is a southern coastal city with a rich history of Buddhist culture and diverse ethnic groups. 19.2% of the land in Myanmar is used for agriculture, while a staggering 48.2% of the land is used for forest coverage. Myanmar is considered to be one of the most underdeveloped countries in Southeast Asia. After decades of control under a militant socialist government, this country has finally emerged out of virtual isolation with the installation of a democratic government in 2015. Yangon is the former capital of Burma, known for its stunning Buddhist temple Kabar I Pagoda seen shining in the background of this photo. The city is heavily influenced by Buddhist religion. The population of the city is 4.8 million. This is the largest city in Myanmar. After decades of highly oppressive militant government rule, Myanmar is now emerging with plenty of opportunities for international investment and growth. In moving forward, the people of Myanmar have the opportunity to freely develop while also improving current infrastructures to reduce carbon emissions. As described by Robert Sokolow and Stephen Pakala of Princeton University, the countries of the world should divide the total amount of carbon emissions into eight wedges and eliminate them to prevent carbon dioxide levels from increasing. In this video, I will apply the wedge theory to the city of Yangon and the surrounding countryside. Wedge 1. Efficiency of Transportation the first carbon wedge that Yangon should tackle is improving efficiency of personal transportation. As a direct result of years of isolation, dated and inefficient cars and taxis are used for personal transportation in Yangon. As in many large Asian cities, traffic during rush hour times is a chronic issue with reliable transportation. In order to improve this while also taking carbon emission out of the equation, additional cars sold in the country should be required to have fuel efficient engines. These efficient engines could power the transportation of individuals who depend on personal transport, bringing down carbon emissions significantly. In addition, the number of cars on the road should be reduced by half, offering cheaper modes of transportation for citizens in the form of public transportation. In order to encourage public transportation for those who do not need personal transport, the current system will need vast improvement. Wedge 2. Public Transportation Improvements the second stabilization wedge will be an improvement in the efficiency and reliability of public transportation. Currently, many locals use overcrowded, dangerous, and ramshackle old buses for transportation. Others employ the use of crowded trains that are said to feel, as one tourist put it, like riding a moving washing machine. In order to combat these issues, an overhaul of the bus and train system in Yangon is essential. Improved buses should not only offer a safer and more reliable experience for travelers, but also run on alternative fuel sources such as natural gas and biofuels. With Myanmar's plentiful source of natural gas and agricultural sector, it is possible to power these modes of transportation with an improved system, while also encouraging those who are giving up their cars to use public transport. Wedge 3 Reforestation, Carbon Sequestration, and the Protection of Wetlands The entire country of Myanmar is made up of 42.8% forest cover. The unprecedented level of biodiversity in the country is drastically important for the sake of conserving biodiversity as well as for protection from storms and the sequestration of carbon. Unfortunately, Myanmar has the third highest rate of deforestation in the world, according to the United Nations. Because of this issue, the third stabilization wedge is to completely halt the rate of deforestation in Myanmar, especially in mangrove swamps. The issue of deforestation stems from a combination of subsistence use of forests and cutting for the sake of distributing valuable tree species such as teak. When trees are extracted from the land, carbon sinks are eliminated from the environment with the halt of photosynthesis. To combat this reduction in carbon sequestration caused by deforestation, companies allowed to log in the future of Myanmar will have strict land restoration requirements. In and around Yangon, which is the largest emitter of carbon in the country, tree planting operations, mangrove wetland conservation, and green roofing will effectively bring down carbon emissions and protect this coastal region from storms. 
Wedge 4. Cyclone Readiness. Stemming from this same idea, the force stabilization wedge is to improve Myanmar's cyclone readiness. On May 1, 2008, Yangon experienced its worst cyclone in recorded history. Cyclone Nargis killed 84,500 people, affecting 2.4 million people countrywide. In a world environment that is increasingly changing to produce more severe storms, Yangon is vulnerable to the impacts of more storms like this. International relief efforts, rebuilding of entire towns and agricultural areas, and relocation are all sure to have a huge carbon price tag. In order to reduce the impacts of storms like this and the resulting rebuild of infrastructure using vast amounts of carbon, all structures including public buildings and residential areas in the city should be reinforced with sustainable and durable materials. Wetland areas, which serve as natural buffers against storms, should be restored where depleted and conserved where intact. With many in the impoverished community of Yangon living in informal settlements such as this one, efforts to rebuild more durable dwellings could ready the city for future cyclones. The next three wedges will focus primarily on the sources of energy that Myanmar uses. To understand these, one must first understand the ways that Myanmar produces energy. Biomass is largely the source of energy for most people in the country. This means that people are likely burning wood for heating homes, cooking, or warming water. This is one of the reasons for deforestation in the country. Because Yangon is the most developed area in the country, many citizens use other sources of energy, such as hydro, gas, oil, or coal. As the country develops, it will likely diversify its energy portfolio. As only 52% of the population actually has energy, many in the future will need access to electricity. Wedge 5. Hydropower Development Hydropower already makes up for 75% of energy use in Myanmar. This means that the country is doing well on this front for the production of energy. However, about 50% of the population of Myanmar doesn't have access to electricity. As the number of citizens with access increases as a result of development, more energy will be needed from these systems. Though hydropower is a renewable energy source, the manipulation of natural water currents for energy can be environmentally destructive. In order to decrease the impact of hydropower development on fishermen, the environment, and other communities, current hydropower plants should be made as efficient as possible, and other forms of energy production should supplement this work. Wedge 6. Energy Switch to Nuclear Energy This energy supplementation could come in the form of nuclear power plants. Currently, the second largest source of energy in Myanmar is natural gas. While natural gas is less environmentally destructive than coal and oil, nuclear power is virtually carbon neutral, with natural gas as a stepping stone. Nuclear power could provide the energy that the future Yangon will need without increasing carbon emissions. This undertaking will take effort on the part of not only the government of Myanmar, but the interest of international investment. Myanmar is in a slow process of recovery at the moment, so international sources of capital may be critical to start the installation of nuclear power. Wedge 7. Solar Energy Another way to provide energy for Yangon in the future will be through the use of solar cells. The desert region indicated with the orange arrow will be home to an extensive operation. In addition, the other 50% of citizens without electricity in Myanmar will have access to clean power. The sun is the single most important source of energy on our planet and the potential for it to power simple things such as water heating, cooking, and warmth is immense. Simple solar cells could impact Myanmar in a positive way, with the introduction of more powerful solar generators in the future. In remote villages in Myanmar, solar energy could provide the energy needed to perform daily tasks. All of this will not be possible, however, if the government infrastructure of Myanmar does not improve. Without a strong infrastructure, none of these wedges will be possible. This is why I am including efficiency of government as one of the eight stabilization wedges. Without the support of strong government, none of these wedges can come true. Wedge 8. Efficiency of government Political strife, civil war, and genocide has plagued the people of Myanmar for decades. Unlawful imprisonment of innocent people, strict censorship, militant rule, police brutality, and corruption 
have made Myanmar isolated and separate from the rest of the world. In 2016, the first non-militant president since the 60s, Hiten Kaya, was elected through democratic processes. With the emergence of a democracy, Myanmar has been open to the rest of the world. This will give it an opportunity to grow and change into the best country it can be. None of the seven other wedges can be achieved without full support and intervention from the governmental body of Myanmar. With the emergence of democracy and the opening of trade between Myanmar and other countries around the world, the potential for sustainable development can be a reality. The fact that Myanmar is so underdeveloped is a good thing and that it can choose its path for development, but a bad thing and that it will have to implement the right kind of governance to achieve it. In conclusion, in order to provide a safe, sustainable, and healthy lifestyle for the future of Yangon, Myanmar, and the world, these eight stabilization wedges will need to be followed closely by the government and the people of Myanmar.